You know, what has taken up the media space and discussion is the sanctions that have been slapped on some government officials. Yesterday, uh, I did see in the news the Minister of National Guidance and Information, Honorable Judith Nabakova, saying they haven't as yet received an official communication, but it is a discussion. The first reaction came from OO. Yes. The government spokesperson. Uh -huh. He he did have any kind words for them anyway. Definitely. <laughs> but anyway, we he want to be blackmail. Uh, we want to be speaking to the United States Embassy Kampala uh, Public Affairs Officer, Mr. Brian George, who is joining us right about now to take us through uh, the sanctions. How um, I mean, because out of uh, some of the reasons that were given was the 2021 polls, the human rights violations uh, that did come through. Thank you very much, Mr. Brian George, for speaking to us on the Morning Breeze. Many are thinking if the reason is about human rights violations out of the last election, uh, the question is why could it have taken this long? How much thought was given to this decision by the U.S. government to slap sanctions on some of the officers? Uh, good morning, and thank you for uh, allowing me to join you uh, on the show. Um, the visa sanctions that were announced on Friday were the res result of a very deliberative process. We take very seriously the authorities under which the sanctions uh, were announced, and uh, we work to ensure that um, uh, all available uh, evidence and information concerning um, the actions of the individuals who were um, designated under this authority uh, are uh, investigated uh, thoroughly and properly. Um, I think it's important to note that um, the United States was upfront um, from the beginning of the election process in Uganda about two points. The first point is that the United States does not support any particular political party. The United States does not support any individual political candidates. The United States made very clear from the outset that we support the democratic process. And that includes the conduct of free, fair, and transparent uh, elections that represent the will of the Ugandan people. Uh, the second point that we made was that we were going to be paying close attention uh, to the conduct of the elections and that we wouldn't hesitate to impose consequences on individuals uh, who were responsible, responsible for undermining the democratic process uh, violating human rights or committing violence, uh, whether before, during, or after the 2020 election. Mr. Brian George, for how long are these sanctions? Are they only for a particular period of time on these individuals while you also as well continue to study? Or would we say it is an indefinite sanction that has been slapped on them? Um, it's fair to say that these are uh, indefinite uh, sanctions. There are certain provisions under which um, the um, uh, designations, the, um, uh, the sanctions can be waived. But uh, again, those are all parts of very um, deliberative processes um, undertaken uh, the, during which we evaluate the specific cir circumstances. But uh, these uh, sanctions are indefinite uh, in, in length of time. Well, um, Mr. Brian George, first it was the Magnitsky Act that was slapped onto Ugandan officials. Now it is travel sanctions. Does this speak to a rift growing between Uganda and the U.S.? Well, what I would say is that um, the United States government has a variety of authorities um, at its disposal uh, to assess, um, to respond to what uh, we perceive to be um, uh, actions to undermine the democratic process or actions that undermine human rights or actions of violence against uh, uh, civilian populations. Um, and the actions on Friday are, uh, you know, a demonstration of, of our uh, willingness to employ those tools uh, wherever and whenever we uh, feel that the democratic process has been undermined. Um, I think it's important to note that the United States has a long-standing uh, partnership with the Ugandan people. Um, everything the United States government does in Uganda is really intended to support the development of a vibrant and prosperous society. And so we work every day um, on programs in the health sector, the education sector, promoting economic growth, um, engaging with civil society with the goal of uh, helping Ugandans live healthy, learn better, earn more, and participate more fully in their society. 
and in their communities. And I think that the impact of those, the impact of our partnership is very tangible, um, whether in the health field where we see um, uh, millions of young Ugandan children who benefit from nutrition support programs um, through the United States, um, in the HIV and AIDS field, malaria, combating TB, and more recently our support for efforts to combat the COVID-19 pandemic in Uganda. And so um, we recognize that these uh, programs have a very important impact on ordinary Ugandans. And so we'll continue to engage um, very um, closely uh, with our partners in Uganda, uh, with Ugandan people to support those programs, while at the same time making sure that we are also um, uh, making sure that we're keeping an eye on the democratic process in Uganda um, and um, ensuring respect for the democratic uh, rights and human rights um, that are enshrined both in the United in the Ugandan constitution and in international treaties to which the Ugandan government is signatory. And so we will continue to pursue both our values, uh, our programs, uh, and our interests simultaneously here in Uganda. Well, Brian, what do you make of the response from Kampala? The officials have treated this, uh, these sanctions with some bit of contempt. Some of them find them laughable. While others, like the government spokesperson, argues that uh, uh, you're, you're being bullies in one way and trying to blackmail a legitimately elected government. Well, I will let the uh, government of Uganda speak for, speak for itself. Um, uh, what I can say on behalf of the United States government, uh, again, is that the United States supports the democratic process in Uganda. Uh, we support um, free, fair, and transparent elections. Uh, we support the active engagement uh, of uh, Ugandan civil society, um, political parties of all stripes, uh, and the media uh, in the democratic process. And um, we will continue to um, uh, provide our support for democratic processes. We'll continue to have uh, open and frank conversations uh, with the government of Uganda. We will continue to have uh, open uh, and uh, frank dialogue with the Ugandan public uh, about the United States position on these issues. Um, and we'll continue to engage um, uh, our partners uh, in Uganda, as I said, in, in very important programs that are designed to have a positive impact on the lives of ordinary Ugandans. Brian, as I let you off, which parameters did you use in determining who is culpable and who isn't? And how soon will these sanctions bite? I would simply say that uh, the United States takes very seriously um, the promotion and support for democratic rights uh, around the world. The United States takes big, states takes very seriously um, the conduct uh, of elections as an important element of any democratic society. Uh, we know that there are challenges in many societies around the world, including the United States, when it comes to the conduct of uh, elections and respect for um, democratic norms. Uh, we know that these are issues that need to be defended uh, and continually renewed, whether that's in the United States, in Uganda, or in other countries around the world. And um, so we, we think it's very important that we continue to engage on these issues, continue to have an open and frank dialogue uh, about our concerns, uh, and continue to work uh, to support the uh, adherence to and respect for democratic norms uh, that are uh, an inherent an inherent part of Uganda's constitution, um, an inherent part of international uh, treaties uh, supporting human rights and democracy, and um, so these are these are values that we will continue to hold very important. Well, thanks very much, Brand, for speaking to us this morning and uh, trying to throw some light on some of the contentious <coughs> questions that remain. Um, um, we certainly continue to ask more, several other questions. Take, for instance, diplomatic etiquette. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Kampala is complaining that uh, the sanctions are devoid of diplomatic etiquette. They should have written to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Exactly. Maybe sought engagement. 
There should have been fair hearing. But, well, I know this is a story that will keep trending it for a while. It is still developing. Yes, it's, still, it's the best time to look in the mirror and ask, could I be the is one? It is, it, is it me? But when you look at me, <laughs> what did I do? You never know. You never know you could be. You never know you could be. But Poor Simon. What did I do? Hmm. I think uh, I'm safe. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Until the list is out. Until but the, the other is question out. is, how are they going to communicate this? Is it individually talking to this? Because then also that would no. be diplomatic. You um, go to Bakaita Kandirisa. Mm, and then they say, mm, Kandirisa, nah, nah. yours has a question mark. Uh -uh. Cross. No, 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 no. no. Mm. There is a military term. New Mageuka. Off. <laughs> geuka, 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 I am geuka. wondering. <laughs> I, I, I am definitely still wondering. No wonder... Um, no wonder we are having that discussion with regard to the official communication to government, mm. even the names it's of the people. It's making us very anxious, anyway. Banang, U.S. Yeah. You, Big brothers. Mm -mm. It's, it's like Chitman. waiting for a baby. You don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. Back in the day when there was no Yes, um, when, when we are not scanning. Mm. But now we are doing self-scans on who is eligible. You try to look back and ask. And ask yourself what you did? Yes. Did I do anything that mm -hmm. borders on human rights? And the democratic <laughs> Okay. But I've had quite a number of people saying, who cares? I wasn't even eager to travel to the US. Mm. Uh, but I think they have more grave consequences that we are yet to examine mm. as a mm. country. Besides visa restrictions. Yes. Okay, America doesn't want you in their country. Do they want you to touch their dollar? At the same time, do they determine when? Or do they touch? even want your relatives? Do they relatives determine when and who touches that dollar? Anyway? Yes, they do. Seriously, under the Magnitsky Act, you're not even supposed to touch that dollar, nor even smell it. And then the problem, like you said, the ripple effect on families. Mm. I think that's very key. And then you'll have an excuse. After all, we have our shit. But well, the great <laughs> thing is, uh, Mr. Brian George is saying that. Um, it is not indefinite that there will be a window depending on what um, happens and the process, how the sanctions can be lifted. Okay. Well, th th 